welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this worship service at St. Luke Lutheran Church. Today, this worship service begins a new season of the church year. This is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday re reminds us and we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to the followers of Jesus in Jerusalem on this day of Pentecost. It's also a day that Paul reminds us in the readings that we'll hear this morning that the gift of the, the Holy Spirit gives us many different gifts, but even though we have many spiritual gifts, the Spirit unites us all together. And I think that's something that we need to be aware of and to work towards, especially during these times, that there is a spirit of unity among us and other people. Um, speaking of that, we continue in our prayers, prayers of support uh, to those who are dealing with the coronavirus epidemic or pandemic. And we also want to add to our prayers uh, this day, the people of Minneapolis who are suffering through terrible ordeal at this time. Um, some church announcements, reminders, we do have a committee meeting this Monday. Worship and music will be meeting together Monday at two o'clock in the fellowship hall. Um, and they're going to be talking more about us and how we will return to worship here in this place. I want to thank, we have a new uh, lector today, Walt Eckert, and so we want to thank him for, for uh, providing his reading uh, of the scripture passages and continue thanks to Alice and to Bud and to Pam and to Bob and to Lori for putting all everybody united together, working together to put this uh, worship service online. And then also please join me for the coffee chat that will follow the worship service. Let us begin our worship. Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. 
when we did not know the way you sent to the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today comes from the second chapter of Acts, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 104, verses beginning with verse 24. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things, both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, beginning with the uh, 12th chapter. 
No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, that is, the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To anyone, and another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may have noticed... Um, the paraments that are on the altar and the lectern and here on this pulpit and my soul as well have changed colors. The color for, the, for Pentecost Sunday is the color of red. Red represents the fiery Holy Spirit, which as I said in the announcements was poured out upon the followers of Jesus on that day of Pentecost a long time ago and was poured out in a dramatic fashion. It was poured out like the rush of a mighty wind had gone through that house where the disciples were sitting. So I had red and the wind on my mind when I sat down uh, to work on this sermon. And I decided to begin this sermon by telling you a true story about a red balloon and the wind. The story is called A Very Lucky Wind. The story begins in a town in, in northern England called Stoke-on-Trent, where a 10-year-old girl named Laura Buxton lives. Laura has blonde hair, which on most days is pulled tied into pigtails. She's got blue eyes, and people say she is tall for her age. Well, one day, Laura decides to send a red bal helium balloon off into the air. But before she does, she writes her name and her address on the card and asks whoever finds the, the red balloon if they could please write to her so she knows how far the balloon had traveled, how was able to travel. She attaches that card to the balloon and she lets go of the red balloon and watches the wind carry it off and away. It sails up into the heavens out of Lara's sight. Well, days pass and then some weeks pass as Lara waits for the card to return to her. Then one day, 140 miles away from where Lara Buxton released the red balloon, a man finds the remains of a red balloon in the bushes of his yard, and he's about to throw it away when he notices that of the card that's attached to the balloon, and he reads the card, and then he takes the red balloon and the card to his next-door neighbor. Why would he do that? Well, there is a 10-year-old girl 
who lives next door to him, who has blue eyes and blonde hair that she pulls and ties into pigtails, who people say she is tall for her age and whose name is Laura Buxton. She responds to the note and sends a return note of her, her own that reads, Dear Laura Buxton, I have your red balloon. Sincerely, Laura Buxton. Now there are more amazing coincidences to this story. <clears throat> when the two Laura Buxtons finally meet each other, they learn they both have a pet guinea pig with a beige spot on his back. And they have two other pets, each have a gray rabbit and a black Labrador. But what's really fascinating about this story is upon further investigation by a reporter who became fascinated with this story, he discovered that on the day that the red balloon was released, the air current was blowing north, not south. And yet some type of wind carried the red balloon south. The story was told on a favorite radio program of mine called Radio Lab. And the question was, and the question is, was it just an amazing coincidence that the red balloon connected both Laura Buxton's, or was it something else, or someone else? They had an expert on statistics on the show who concluded it was just an amazing coincidence. But others, including both Laura's, who are now in their 20s and best friends, believe something else, that it was meant to be, that they were meant to meet one another. Something else blew that balloon south. Something willed it, they think, they believe. But we don't know for sure, do we? Now, I told you this story because it raises the question of how we can know if the Spirit of the Lord is at work among us or if it's something else. As the people in the story of Pentecost thought it was the wine who made the disciples act the way they did. Luke described it this way, suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house and all the followers of Jesus were filled with the Holy Spirit and the disciples began to speak in all kinds of languages and people from all over the world who had come to the festival of Pentecost Parthians, who, when they heard the voices, they stuck their heads through the doorway and thought they'd see their friends in there. And Libyans looked in through the windows, expecting to find fellow Libyans, but all they found were a bunch of fishermen from Galilee, all of them going on and on about this person, Jesus. They weren't sure if it was the Holy Spirit or another kind of spirit, they must be filled with wine. That was the explanation, another kind of spirit. Not the Holy Spirit was at work among them. But Peter told them it couldn't be that. It wasn't five o'clock in the afternoon yet. It was something else at work. Peter said, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. It's, a, it's an amazing story, isn't it? So kind of like the red balloon story, how can we tell if it's the Holy Spirit at work or just the wind blowing? It makes you wonder about God's spirit working among us. How do we know it's divine power at work or something else? Well, we find clues in the Pentecost story itself that can help us detect God's Spirit working among us. Let's look at it again. After the disciples breathed in the Spirit, people who were bitterly divided against each other, Arabians and Israelis, suddenly came together. So today, whenever we experience or see what divides us from others disappearing, it's the sound of God's Spirit at work. Maybe this has happened to you. You go to a meeting, maybe a church meeting. You think nothing's going to happen. Same old, same old stuff. Everyone comes into the room with their own ideas, their own agendas. And then someone says a prayer and people begin to talk to each other. People listen 
to each other. They take each other seriously, coming up with ideas none of them had thought of on their own. It's as if a fresh wind blew through the room and clears everyone's head, but it wasn't the wind, it was the Spirit of the Lord. And then later on that first Pentecost day, Luke reports that after the disciples breathed in the Spirit, after people heard what Jesus had done, they took it to heart, and they repented of their sins, and they received forgiveness. So we look for those moments when relationships are repaired. Maybe this has happened to you. You've had a disagreement with someone you've You've been on the outs with someone you care about and you're tired of that, so you begin to plot ways to reconcile and you draft emails and you rehearse a phone call and none of it sounds right and there's anger and hurt still in your words. And then one day, for no apparent reason, something inside you says, now, nah. and you grab the phone and the person answers and says hello and your heart opens and the right words come out. Luke also reports, after the disciples breathed in the Spirit, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That sounds like worship to me. You know, Martin Luther said that we don't bring ourselves to church on our own power, but it's the Holy Spirit who calls and gathers us together for worship. We heard the Apostle Paul point out this morning that even our ability to believe in Jesus as Lord is the work of the Spirit. Luke also tells us after the disciples breathed in the Spirit, they gave their money in order to meet the needs of the poor. And so when you put something in the offering plate, or during these days, you drop it by the church office or you mail it to the church, or you put a grocery bag in the collection boxes that are outside of the church office, could that be the Spirit blowing among us? You know, people can come up with any number of reasons why these things happen, or why we do these things. But Luke would tell us it's not the wine, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, we can't see wind. We can only see the effects of wind. We only know the wind at work when we see trees bending, or balloons floating, or hear the sound of it blowing past us. It's the same with God's Holy Spirit working through us. Amen.
And now let us confess the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, as they care for those in need, especially those suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for all who long for comfort and for healing. We pray especially this day for Richard, Carolyn, Marcia, Wyman, Coral, Sherry, the loved ones of George Floyd, and the people of Minneapolis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and in all places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ to the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. The God of all steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.
Well, hello, I'm glad you joined me and Pam. Say hello, Pam. Hey, everybody. For uh, coffee and fellowship time, so we can, I can talk to you at least, and you can hear from me and uh, get to know me a little bit more. Um, I've got some props today that we found. So if you haven't seen the worship part of this video, I'm sure you have if you're watching this, then you'll understand the red balloon. Um, so we thought Pam had the idea. Oh, crazy other coincidence. After hearing my sermon, she said, I wish I had a red balloon. So we looked around the church and lo and behold, you all had some red balloons. And only red balloons. <laughs> and only red balloons <laughs> on the shelf off of the room in the, uh, off of the fellowship hall. So that's another crazy coincidence about red balloons. And it's blown up. Um, so I thought for this chat, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about my family so that, so that you know the, our family and our, our daughters. And then a, maybe just a little bit of talking about getting back to worship in the sanctuary and, and where all that is um, and what needs to be done. And I'll spend, so I think I'm going to spend next Sunday going through details about that because it's, it's going to be very different. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Dini and Becky. They met with me this past week. Uh, we started um, creating the social distancing in the sanctuary so that we are all safe. Um, and so we figured out the seating um, that will happen. And it's just going to be different. I'm really sure that you're not going to be sitting in your pew. Um, it's just not going to work that way for a while. Um, even getting into the church, how we come into the church and how we exit the church is going to be different. Um, so, but I'm going to talk about the, those details next Sunday. Um, so I'm going to tell you about our kids and cause I, I promised you that we would bring pictures of Rowan, our grandbaby with us. And I did, we remembered. So proud grandma, grandma Pam is going to show you a couple pictures of our grandson, Rowan. There he is. Um, and we get to, um, so, so I'll tell you about, so Jennifer is his mom. That's our eldest daughter, Jennifer. She's married to Christopher. They live in Philadelphia. And in fact, Pam is going to go two weeks from now, uh, is going yeah. up there uh, to help them. They just bought a house. They live in an apartment um, in kind of South Philly. It's near, near South Street. I don't know if you know Philly, um, but they have an apartment there. But they bought a house in Roxborough which is right outside of Philadelphia. So they're gonna, they're gonna be in the process of moving. So they need someone to take care of Rowan. And <laughs> guess who volunteered? So she's gonna go up there for about 10 days. And quarantine first. Yeah, so she's gonna quarant start quarantining for the next Today. two weeks, because she, she leaves in two weeks. Um, so, uh, so, and so Jennifer works at Drexel University. She is an admissions officer. Uh, she's working from home right now. Christopher is a professor of physics at Villanova University, so they both work at universities in, in the Philly area. Um, he too is, he too is, he and I had to learn um, how to do online stuff at the same time. So all his classes went, you know, to video to online. And he's classes. been helping. And he's actually helped, yeah, to figure things out. So they're in Philly and have a baby, and so Rowan is almost four months. June 4th, they'll be four months old. Yeah. Um, all three of our daughters were born in North Carolina, so they're all native Carolinians, believe it or not. They were all Southern Bells. All spoke Southern uh, until they were probably second or third, no, fourth grade. Jennifer spoke Southern for a while. Yeah. Um, and then Jacqueline is our middle daughter, and she lives in Salt Lake City with her husband, Dylan. Um, she works for the Salt Lake City Arts Department. And theater. Yeah, so they run the, the concerts that come into the, the and theater productions and um, like comedians, comedians, all kinds of, they, they have like a uh, like four symphony venues. hall. They have venues, yeah, that they do things. So she works for them. Dylan works for the University of Utah. He is uh, one of their football recruiters. 
Um, so he scouts, he scouts uh, high school players throughout the country. Um, they've become a powerhouse football team, I think because of him. He, ever since he's been there, <laughs> they have risen through the, the ranks. They almost got to the Rose Bowl this, this past season. So, um, And we have, do I do the big news now? So uh, we got big news from Jacqueline on Mother's Day, and that is she is expecting our second grandchild. She's already passed her first trimester, right? And so yeah. the baby's due in November. So you probably won't see Pam in November either. <laughs> and then... Um, so two... So yeah, so we will have two of our grandbabies born in the same year. 2020. 2020. So as bad as 2020 has been so far for us, um, there's been some really good news as well for us. And so we're really happy about that. So you'll get to see more pictures. Um, and then Abby is our youngest and she lives in Los Angeles. Um, unfortunately, she was in the restaurant uh, work business, so she lost her job. And so she's unemployed right now. She lives, uh, I'm trying to, I can't remember the area, but it's right next to Pasadena. Uh, she lives in a, it's a very nice area. She has two roommates. Uh, she's not married, although she has a boyfriend, Tristan, uh, who's a very nice guy. They also, they're a group. They, they, they've recorded one CD and they're recording right now. They're um, some more new music. Um, you can actually find them online, either by her name, Abby Icorn Tristan, or Flower Boy is the name of the, their duo. He plays the guitar, he writes the song, and she sings with him. She was the one so singing. she is the one, right. So you heard a woman's voice in the video during worship. Uh, Unfortunately, during it wasn't mine. That is not Pam. <laughs> that is. Although I'd like to take credit, but I can't. That is Abby from Los Angeles on Pam's phone, FaceTiming us. At 8.30 at, in the morning. Yeah, for her 8.30 in the morning. Um, so she is part of the liturgy. It's a crazy technology, what you can do with that. So anyway, so that's um, that's our family, right? Am I leaving anybody out? Um, I can just tell you that Pam's- We both are mothers. We yeah, both I'm say that. Um, Pam's mom is still with us and she lives in Nashville. And she has pretty much all her, her life. That's where Pam's from. And that's from. where I'm from. Pam's from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, went to University of Tennessee nursing program and graduated there. And then my mom lives in Bradenton, Florida, and she's been there since 94? Yeah, 94. 94. Yeah, as soon as we moved back to Pennsylvania, my mom left and <laughs> moved to Florida. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and they're both doing okay right now. Uh, my mom is, well, both both moms, they're, they're in senior living centers, so they're kind of locked down and no one can see them. but. So that's the family. Um, what else did I want to tell you about today? Um, oh, so also, as I said in my announcements, the Worship and Music Committee will be meeting on Monday afternoon to talk about the liturgy and how, how things need to, yeah, we're gonna meet in the fellowship hall and sit at our own table. So we're practicing social distancing and wearing masks, we're staying safe. Um, and, and even so, so the worship service itself will be different um, and we got to figure that out. And again, I'll spend most of my time next week going through the details. I received a um, recommendations for safe return to worship from our insurance company, uh, Church Mutual. And it's like the best thing. I've, I've received other things from the Synod and, and then the National Church and they're just pages and pages of things to think about and to do. This is really nice. It's just a front and back sheet, um, kind of bullet points and uh, things that you sh should be thinking about. And I'll tell you, um, we've thought about most of this, these things. So I, I'm kind of proud of, of how it, it's a lot to prepare for. It really is. And I thank everybody who's pitching in and, and thinking about these things and what we have to do to stay safe and all of that. I think fine, the final thing I want to say is, um, if you need anything, like if you need someone to pick up groceries or prescriptions or anything for you, Pam and I can do that. Um, she, after I quarantine, I'll after she quarantines, it comes back from Philadelphia. 
Um, but we would love to help. Yeah, so we're, I mean, we're here. We, we both have cars, um, so we can do that. We can run around for people. If you, if or you, you just need, need someone to talk to. Or, yeah, or yeah, someone to talk to, call me. Um, or even to do, I, I know some of the guys in the church are willing to do some work, or, you know, outside or if you need something cleaned up or whatever. So just the church is here for you. You know, I thought about that this week. I'll finish on, on this note. Um, where we talked about closing down the church, but it, we did, we have it. The church is not closed. We haven't closed. We're just doing things differently. We're still having worship. Um, the office is still open. People are here and doing things. So it's, it's amazing. I, I, I had to stop say, thinking that and saying that, that, that the church closed down. We, we are not. Uh, we're still here and we're still, services. still doing ministry. So if you need anything, let us know. All right. Well, take care. God bless. Stay, stay safe. And we'll talk to you soon. And we can't wait to meet your families. Yeah, we can't wait to meet face to face.